I've been monitoring a situation in boxing for over a week now. And it's the perfect example as to why I say boxing is getting on my nerves. Boxing is a poor man's sport. It's a working class sport. The guys that go down the pub, the guys that work in the factories, the guys that work in the coal mines back in the days and all these types of things. Cheap to get into and it's very testosterone based. You can go down the gym and hit something, i.e. bag or someone. Better themselves because what happens is when you get to the top end of boxing, a lot of people want to watch you and you can earn a lot of money. Boxing is prize fighting and it's not easy to get to the top in boxing. And if you do get that chance where you're picked up by a big promoter and they give you the platform, you should grasp it with both hands and you should be willing to fight all comers and build your name through your fights, which will then generate the necessary interest to generate the funds that you say that you should get. It's the promoter's jobs to make sure that you are getting the exposure and then they see the metrics and understand from that what kind of value your fights are bringing and pay you accordingly and bid for your fights accordingly. And you need to just settle and know your places because you wouldn't be nowhere if it wasn't for your promoter. You start complaining about your promoters these days. Back in the days, their man, they were hungry to fight. They were bringing their fan base and the next man will be bringing their fan base and there wouldn't be no pay-per-views until both fighters have a big enough fan base. And then you build a pay-per-view and you make the pay-per-view one away. Pay-per-view weren't happening every day, every week like it's happening now. Everything's pay-per-view now. Every little thing is pay-per-view, especially in America. If you live in America and you watch boxing, I feel sorry for you because you're paying bags of money to watch these mediocre fights. Mediocre fighters that are, they're not, they lack luster. They're not even really trying and they don't even really want to have the fights. You're watching pay-per-view for the fights that you don't even want to actually see. I actually feel sorry for you. It's not a good look. It's getting worse. It's before it's going to get better. It's not good. These boxers are weak. I'm telling you. And I'm not even going to hold it down. I'm trying to hold it down, but I'm not. You are weak, man. Your minds are weak. It's not even that you can't box well. Maybe you're great at boxing, but you're weak-minded. You are scaredy cats, man. And if you want... This, all right, the situation is this. This is what I'm vexed about, okay? This is what I'm vexed about. Terence Crawford says, well, I'm not going back to World Weight. I'm chilling up here at junior middleweight. I just beat this guy and got the belt. So I'm going to stay up here and I'm going to see what I'm doing up here. So the sanctioning body, slowly but surely, one by one, took the belts away from Terence Crawford. And one by one, they emailed their, the belts to the different number ones in each ranking system. The first one was the IBF title. That gets emailed to Jerron Boots Ennis. The second one was the WBC title. That got emailed to Mario Barrios. The third one was the WBO title. That one got emailed to Brian Norman. And the fourth one, the WBA belt, got emailed to Elmantis Stanionis. So these guys were number one contenders at the represented sanctioning body. And they got their title by email. They didn't have to fight a champion. They got emailed the title. Cool. No worries. At this point right now, you have promoters involved. Mario Barrios and Emantis Stanionis seem to be on the PBC side of things. They seem to be on the PBC side of things because PBC say they are not a promotional company. And their promotional companies are some different names, but they're all fall under the PBC banner. Jerron Ennis, he is with Matrim. Brian Norman, he is with Top Rank, Bob Aram and the Mandem. So, but all these guys have got belts now. Jerron has already had, Jerron Ennis has already had a title defence. Brian Norman hasn't had a title defence, but the fight that he last had was the fight to then give him the title. And Mantis Stanionis, I don't care what he done, he's got the belt now. And so with the same with Mario Barrios, whatever he done. I can't exactly remember what these two guys done in their last fights because they were boring. They were not even boring fights. They were just, just any fights. 
Do you get what I'm saying? These guys are basically email champions. Let's not even go there. They are champions now. Okay, cool. You're champions. Okay? That's fine. Jaron Ennis now and his promoter has said, right, we want to unify. We want to fight another guy that's got a title because we want to become undisputed at the world to weight division. Okay, this is news I'm getting off of the internet. It's all coming from the internet. I'm getting this news. Then they've offered Brian Norman a offer which seems to be quite substantial. Now, this is another thing. I'm not trying to watch people's money. I'm not here to say this fight is supposed to get paid that and that fight is supposed to get paid this. I do not care. Just like as in any other sport. I like all these different sports, okay? But with the diff the difference between the other sports that I like and boxing is that in the other sports that I like, i.e. football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, or American football, basketball, you know, Formula One, these sports, what happens is you are part of a team it has its own network. It has its own revenue. It's got its fan base. It's got its slotted times that it's on throughout the year. Every week within this period of time, you're going to see a race or you're going to see a football match or you're going to see a basketball game, especially with basketball. That can be happening two, three times a week. And they get paid according to what they're worth in terms of the revenue that comes in from this TV revenue, I suppose, as well as sponsors and, and whatever else. So then a player comes to a club, this player costs X amount and will get paid X amount a week. Oh, great stuff. People, they, you've got your little factions that say, oh, he's paid too much. Oh, no, man, he should get paid more. But all in all, people don't really care. You get on the pitch or you get in the field and you do what you're going to do. You get on the court, you do what you're going to do and you get judged by your performance. Nah, he's rubbish. Oh, he's really good. These type of things. She ain't all of that. She's really good. These type of things. Boxing now, it, it's not structured like that. Boxing doesn't have a season. It doesn't have a league. It doesn't have a particular slot in time. Boxers can fight once a year, twice a year. Boxers can say, I don't want to fight this guy. I'll fight this guy instead. You're not going to hear the Chicago Bulls have a fixture to play the Golden State Warriors. And they say, no, we don't want to play Golden State. We don't want to play them. We're going to play someone from the G League. This does not happen. Or, okay, if we're not going to... F if we can't play Sacramento instead of Golden State, then we're just not going to play. We just won't play. We'll just wait for the next game after that. And then we'll choose the next game we want to play. These things do not happen in the sport. Liverpool can't say, I don't want to play City. I'm going to go and play Reading instead. It, this just can't happen in these sports because of the structure. But in boxing, it seems that you can do these type of things. I don't want to fight this guy. I'm going to go and fight that guy instead. I'm not going to fight, fight this guy unless you pay, this, pay me this amount and all of this type of stuff. It's ridiculous. You've got these two guys. Boots is with Matchroom. Brian Norman is with Top Rank. They've never been champions before either of them. Boots has got a bigger name than Brian Norman. I don't know people that have seen this guy, Brian Norman. You're an unknown entity. And you've just so happened to be in the position where you can get this belt emailed to you. That's fine. It's not a problem. You need to now build your name. How are you going to build your name? Oh, Matchroom and Eddie Hearn have come over to me and said their champion wants to fight me. So I'm going to fight their champion and they're going to pay for it. My bosses ain't going to pay for anything. But from what they pay me, I have to give my bosses a little percentage because they're my bosses and that's what my contract says. That's fine. What are you man paying me? Oh, they want to give me a couple million or a million and a half. Oh, I wonder what I got paid in my last fight. So this is another thing. People get paid to what they are worth. So when you look at the numbers, which I don't like to do because it's not my business, I just want to see these guys fight. But with the situation happening, I had to look at the numbers and see, wait a minute, how come my man be turning his nose up at a certain amount of money? What's going on? Because Eddie Hearn now, he's coming out and giving out people the numbers. What's happening is they're trying to negotiate this fight. And Brian Norman and his people, they're saying, no, we want more. We want more money. We want more money. These times, you, no one knows you, bro. No one knows you. You're fighting on undercards. You're fighting. You're not, I don't even think you're the co-main event. You're fighting way down the list on the undercard. You're getting 100 grand there, 100 grand there, 100 grand there. 
this guy's coming and offering you 1.5 million just because you got that belt that got emailed over to you. And you're saying, no, nah, I don't want 1.5. I want 2.5. You have to give me 2.5 if you want this belt. Because if you're going to take my belt, that means you're taking my O as well. So my O and this belt combined, I value that at 2.5 million. Really? Ruby, you're making me laugh out here. Do you know that there's guys that go and fight week in, week out. They're called journeymen. Their records are upside down, as in five wins and 55 losses. Ten wins, 125 losses. These guys are fighting week in, week out. They, might, they may fight three times a week and they're getting £50 a fight, £70 a fight, £100 a fight. This is how they're doing it, week in, week out. On a good night, they'll get a grand. They'll get a five grand. Like, yo, I just got five grand for this. This guy must be this, this guy must be up and coming famous because I just got five grand. These guys are the, the journeymen that make this sport even exist. You lot are sniffing at them, laughing at them, saying that you, with your little 100 grand payday, is worth now 2.5 million. Then you've got your silly little boys who are talking about their, your manager and your dad coming out talking about giving their reasons and their opinions as to why you should get this money and, and this, that, and the other. Yeah, there was an offer of, of $1.5 million. As we say, high risk, high reward. All right, $1.5 million was the offer. So Brian would have had to pay 20% of his purse to top rank to go fight Jaron Ennis. So that's $300,000. He has a world-class trainer. That's 10%. That's $150,000. Top management. That's another 10%. 150,000. And then to fight for the belts is not free. 3% off of $1.5 million is $45,000. This guy came on a boxing podcast. His manager, Brian Norman's manager and his dad came on a boxing podcast and broke down their costs and what they basically have to pay out before Brian Norman actually gets paid. Big man. Nobody cares about that. That's you lot's business. At the end of the day, if you've got to do it for the money that you're going to get for this fight, that means you also have to do such things for the money that you get for the fights that you have anyway. Minus the, a fee that you pay to your promoter. But guess what? It's your promoter that's paying you. That's why your promoter has already taken their fee. You stupid people. You think your promoter just paying you out of thin air and you're not paying a fee to your promoter. That's how you're dumb. That's how you lot are stupid. You think you're clever coming and talking all of this stuff. These times you don't know nothing. You have to pay your promoter anyway. So them man taking, taking that 20, 30% that the promoter takes is less than what the promoter takes from you when you fight under his banner. And he's paying you a hundred grand. And out of that hundred grand, all those other fees about talking about you have to pay your manager and your coach and that, you still have to pay your manager and your coach. You still have to. So even though let's take away that fee that you're thinking that you're not paying, you stupid people, you think you're not paying your promoter. Okay, let's take that away. You're talking about paying your coach and paying your manager, paying your nutritionist, paying sparring partners. You still have to do that anyway for other fights. You eat this. And now my mind was getting, all right, let's say you what you're saying. You was going to get 17 times more than you've ever been paid before in your life. And you're like, no, we want to spin the block and go and fight these other fights and come back with more. We've got more credibility and we'll get more money. Because right now, that 1.7, the maths ain't mathing. They said the maths ain't mathing for the 1.7 mil. So guess what? I'm not going to have that fight. I'm going to go and fight back with top rank and I'm going to bet on myself and then they're going to pay me maybe two or three hundred K. And because of what happened over here, that, that two or three hundred K might actually now turn into five hundred K and I'm going to get five hundred, half a mil over there, right? And still have to pay my coach, still have to pay my nutritionist, still have to pay my sparring partners, still have to pay my manager and I'm good with that because I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to build my name. And then once I have a few more title defences, I'm going to come back and we're going to go back to the negotiating table and see how it goes from then. Big man, you better hope that happens. You better hope and pray that you don't lose. And you better hope and pray that you don't lose. And when them top-ranked guys, 
They don't ramp with their fighters. They put you, man, in the hard fights. Top rank and match room. Don't ramp with their fighters. They make sure that you are fighting quality fighters. So, yeah, let's see if you keep that belt that you put up for ransom. And let's see if you don't lose it for less than that 1.7 that Eddie was offering you just a minute ago. Because at the end of the day, that's your business. That's up to you. And you chose this route. Let's hope it works for you guys. Because at the same time, Boots might not even stay at the division. Well, now, this whole thing has happened. Boots now is going to fight somebody else. And Eddie Hearn said, do you know what, Boots? This guy you're fighting, you fought him already. Karen Kukatsian has become his mandatory after he's already fought him. Do you understand? He fought him last year, even. Unanimous decision. And Eddie's like, listen, man, I'm not paying this guy to fight you. At the end of the day, this is the offer that they have to, to take for, for you to fight him. And if they don't take this offer, then they have to outbid it. And if they outbid it, then they can pay you, man. Because I'm not paying you to fight this guy again. They can pay you to fight him. Because I don't do business like that. Let them pay you. You go and fight them on their platform. Bang him up again. Knock him out this time. Come back over to match room and we keep it pressing. You understand? Or they might say, no, let's abandon this waterweight thing and let's go and chase Crawford upstairs at junior middleweight or something like that. I don't know. But at the end of the day, they bidded for the fight. And guess what? Matchroom did not win the bid. And now he's going to have to fight on another guy's platform. And it just so happened that Brian Norman's manager seen the tweet and put up some reply to the tweet where he's laughing. Like to say, ah, look, you can't even win bids. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But what he's not even pre is, look at your side of the street, my guy. You need to concentrate on your promoter and see if he's winning bids. Because right now, I just see him lose a bit for his fighter, Yannibek. Yeah? Yannibek can't get a fight. And that's Yannibek at the middleweight, Donny. Yannibek can't get a fight and he's just been outbidding. So if top ranks champion Yannibek Anam Kanula, who they had as a champion before no Brian Norman was on the scene, yeah? So they've had Yanni Beck as a champion and he's better known than you, right? And he is a champion and they were outbidded for him. Do you think they'll be able to outbid anybody for you, my guy? They bidded about, they didn't even bid half a million for this done. They bidded something like 350K. So understand, he doesn't get that. That 350K is to be split between both fighters and obviously the champion gets more. But 350k is nowhere near 1.7 million, bro. And that's what they were... That's what your promoter was willing to bid for their champion. A thousand dollars they were outbidded by. They bid 350,000 and the other promoter bid 351,000. And now their champion has to go and... I think it's Australia they got to go to have this fight now. And they're the champion. So guess what? Your own promoter won't bid nowhere near no 1.7 for you if there was any purse bid, bro. And I think that unifications should be mandatory now. I think these governing bodies should make these guys fight each other. And if they can't come to an agreement, there should be a purse bid. And let them bid for that. And let Because purse bids are blind. One promoter can't see what the other promoter's bidding understand but obviously the word might get out in the grapevine boom 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 all of that but it's supposed to be blind so you will see who really values you and how much they value you at, at a purse bit that's why i think unifications should be purse bits it's crazy so boots was trying to fight brian norman brian norman has said he doesn't want to fight or brian norman his people who are him basically because they're representing him they have said they are not gonna fight for that type of money. One point nothing million as his dad said. It was ridiculous. His dad's rant was mad. These guys are worried about the wrong things. How are you worried about what Boots is getting paid? That has nothing to do with you. This guy is giving you what they think that you're worth. Furthermore, he's overpaying you massively. Because there's no way in anyone's opinion that you should be getting that type of money. But that's not my business. Because I, I'm, but I am all for man getting their money, bro. I'm all for man getting their money. Yeah, especially the black man. Them get your money up. You understand? At the same time, if you are overpricing yourself, then you're an idiot. You're an idiot. It's not my business with your money. What you do with your money? 
But once you overprice yourself for the fight, that's it. You don't want the fight. You don't want the fight. Watching what a next man gets. What a next man gets is nothing to do with you. That's what he can generate. What can you generate? You can't generate anything. That's why your promotional company is not going to Eddie, banging off Eddie's door, saying, we want to pay your fighter to come over and fight our fighter on our platform. It's not happening. And you ain't going to get no other welterweight in the ring either. Not no champion anyway. This is what I mean. So, that's the situation. They were supposed to have the fight. They didn't get to have the... They were supposed to make the fight happen. They didn't get to make the fight happen. So, now they have had to do their own thing. Because the IBF called down their mandatory, which is this Karen Kukatsian guy, who he's already fought and beat. Boots Ennis has already fought and beat this Karen Kukatsian guy two fights ago. I think it was just last year. And now, Brian Norman's got himself a fight booked as well. So they both got fights booked and they're not going to fight each other right now, which is just dead food to me. It's dead. This makes no sense. Brian Norman is about to fight this guy called Daddy Creva from Puerto Rico. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. You better mind for these little unknown entities. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. You might find out fast that this was a bad idea because who's to say that this guy who I've never heard before, Derek Cuevas. Never heard of Derek Cuevas before. But he's got 27 wins with one loss and one draw. Now, I don't know who he lost to. I don't know who he beat. I don't know who he lost to. I will say that the welterweight division is a barren land at this present moment in time. At the same time, who he lost to seems to be a journeyman type fighter. Well, even though his record is an upside down record, at this present moment, he's got 24 wins with 14 losses been knocked out four times in them 14 losses but when he fought who brian norman's about to fight Derek cuevas he had eight losses at that time and that was so in the last four years because that was four years ago he's had a significant amount of losses he's only really lost he's had one win so he's only had one win and six losses in that time there. So it seems that like he lost to a journeyman type guy, but it was his one loss. And he had a draw earlier on in, in, in his career. And these guys, I don't know who he lost and drew to, but at the same time, he has been a winning and he's got a winning record and he's from Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico Donnies are very, very, very tough cookies and they're known to produce good boxers. So we'll see how this works out for brian norman as for boots i don't know what he's about to do i don't know if he's going to take the fight or he's not going to take the fight time will tell with that one but up until this point this is the situation and i will definitely talk about this again when um when jerron ennis gets his fight finalized and we know what he's doing from now on but this is a stupid situation because i was really hoping that Brian Norman would fight Boots because that would have been a very, very good fight right now. And that would have made Brian Norman make a name for himself, win, lose or draw, if he had gone out there and made a good account of himself, put on a good performance. Boxing is getting on my nerves. It's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. But we'll see what happens going forward. I'll see you guys in the next video.